Hey, what's up? All right, so uh, this video is about how to solve some basic absolute value equations. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out some examples here and use these to illustrate the process by which you accomplish this. So check this out. So our first example, uh, example one, is going to be the absolute value of x plus four equals ten. Okay. So um, there's there's something about absolute value that you should know to begin with, um, and it's going to kind of make sense why we're going to solve this a certain way if you if you know what absolute value is. Okay, so the formal definition of absolute value is this. Absolute value of x equals x when x is um, greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0, and it equals negative x when x is... Uh, less than zero. So this is just kind of a fancy way of saying when in the positive realm, x stays positive, and in the negative realm, you have to switch the sign to make x positive. So th this fact that it's the point, the point is the bottom line is that sometimes absolute value is positive and sometimes it's negative, or excuse me, it's sometimes the sign switches, right? So um, th the reason, because of this, the way you solve this, instead of so writing x absolute value of x plus 4 equals 10, you're actually going to break this absolute value equation into two normal equations. And by normal, I mean equations that don't involve absolute value, right? So I'm going to break this into two equations. The first equation is going to be x plus 4 equals 10. And the second equation is going to be x plus 4 equals negative 10. So, I don't know, you don't have to know this whole explanation that I just gave you, but for those of you who like to understand the, th the theoretical basis behind things, this is kind of why, okay, because it's positive sometimes, negative sometimes. But the bottom line is that when you break apart an absolute value equation to solve it, you just write one equation with the positive version, and then one equation that has the negative version. So, I, see what I'm saying? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve both these equations separately. This is so this is really easy. I'm just going to subtract 4 from both sides. So this equation, the solution is going to be x equals 6. This equation, the solution is going to be x equals negative 14, right? Because minus 4 minus 4, negative 10 minus 4 is 4, negative 14, right? So let's check these the values to make sure it makes sense, right? See, if I put x plus 6, or excuse me, uh, if I put 6 in for x, if I go 6 plus 4, that's 10. Absolute value of 10 equals 10. Perfect. That works. Okay, what about x equals negative 14? If I put in negative 14 for x, negative 14 plus 4 is negative 10. Absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. So do you see now why we set this equation equal to negative 10? That's because if we put a negative 10 inside of here and I take the absolute value of it, it's going to give me a positive 10. That's the whole point of, that's why I had to break it into these two equations. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. You can just remember that you make one positive and one negative, but it's kind of nice to understand that. Anyways, so the second example uh, we're going to do is introducing a slight complication, but it's not much. Okay, um, and so the second example is x minus 3, or actually uh, absolute value of x minus 3, plus 6 uh, equals 11. Okay, so the, the only thing that's different about this one is that you have to get rid of this 6 first, okay? Before you do this thing where you break it into the two equations, you actually need to make it to where the only, everything else is gone, okay? The only thing on the, on the left side of the equation is just the thing that is within the absolute value bars. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. I'm going to go minus 6, minus 6, okay? It's going to go away. So I'm going to rewrite this equation, absolute value of x minus 3 equals... 11 minus 6 is 5, right? Yeah. Okay. So now it's basically just like the first equation, right? Break it into two equations. First equation is going to be x minus 3. Notice when I when I break it into equations, I drop these absolute value bars. It goes away, right? So x minus 3 equals positive 5. That's like the, the positive version, okay? And then I'm going to do um, x minus 3 equals negative 5 because that's the negative version. So anyways, solve this. Basically, I'm just going to add 3 to both sides, right? So x, in this case, equals 8. And then x, in this case, equals um, negative 2, right? Because uh, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Cool. So yeah, these, these are my two solutions. And again, I can check them. 8 minus 3 is 5. Absolute value of 5 is 5. Negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Excellent. So it works. Okay, so the third example I'm going to um, do is 
kind of, uh, it's more of a conceptual example, but I'm going to write it out anyways. All right, so the third example is this. So I, if I had the absolute value of x plus 22, and that equals negative 3. So how do I solve this? Well, you would be tempted to think, oh, well, this is easy, right? I just um, add, I, uh, you know, I, I do this thing where I split it apart, right? Well, it turns out that I stop right here. I can automatically say here, in this, for this equation, there is no solution. There is no solution for x. Why? why? Why is there no solution? It's because this is negative. Anytime you have an absolute value of something that equals a negative number, it is impossible. Well, why is it impossible? Because absolute value always makes everything positive. So no matter what is inside this absolute value, it's always going to be positive. And so there's no way it's going to end up being negative. Does that make sense? So, um, yeah, essentially what you're trying to do is you're just looking at this, and anytime you see a negative answer and you have an absolute value, you, you're never, you don't even have to go anywhere. You're done. Basically, you're, you're completely finished at that point. So this is x equals no solution. Cool. So that's basically it. I uh, hope that made sense. A um, little bit rambling there, but anyways, um, please subscribe if you like my videos. Check out my other ones. Let me, let me know what you think. Leave some comments. I'll try to get back to you, actually. I literally will answer your questions if I, if I have enough time to do so. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it.